Right, so good morning and once welcome once again to the AM show. We're getting into the conversation proper for this morning and it has to do with breakfast. It has to do with something that you see on your breakfast table all the time, sugar. So the $36.5 million Commenda Sugar Factory is idol of the five years of commissioning. This dames Garner's dream to produce sugar locally and reduce the importation of sugar. Figures from 2016 show Ghana spent $200 million to produce sugar, to import sugar annually. The unpleasant news is that the factory is rusting away. Machines are corroded and the roofs are torn, as you can see in the videos. The factory, which is just five years old, looks almost 20 years. The transaction advises on the agreement to, the, to revamp the Commander Sugar Factory, PricewaterhouseCoopers, have revealed that the main issue preventing the commencement of work on the project is how to get some tax incentives for the new investor. Here's Vishal Shiawell, senior partner at PwC, speaking in August 2021. I went to Parliament at the end of July. He made reference to the fact that there were some conditions present that we needed to work through in order for the effectiveness of the contract. However, in this case, the most significant issue that we are working to deal with is a request from the strategic investor for certain tax incentives. And it, again, I think the minister put this in the public domain back, I think it was February, when he was going through his vetting. So the issue is that in the early stages of this operation, there will be insufficient raw material locally. So there has to be some provision made for importation of raw sugar into finished product at the factory. What we are working through now now is um, the tax incentive package that will go with the importation of that raw sugar, but also plant and machine and other input that will allow the factory to operate effectively. I think that Mr. Shagwa will join us today and give us an update on the Commander Sugar Factory. But we have in the studio Ransford Amwa, who's a former board secretary of the Commander Sugar Factory, and then the convener of concerned residents of Commander Samuel. Uja would join us via Zoom. But before that, let's uh, listen to some of the residents of Commander. Because <laughs> All right, so sorry about uh, the loss of uh, sound on that one. We'll uh, bring you that a little later. But uh, I have Ransford with me in the studio. And uh, good morning to you once again. Good morning to you. Morning. So the Commander Sugar Factory, this, this is a conversation that uh, it's been back and forth for a while. What do you think is wrong with, with the factory and why we can't seem to start it? Uh, Israel, le let me say good morning and good morning to your cherished viewers. The Commander Sugar Factory, I do not see the challenge of the Commander Sugar Factory. The only challenge is the politicization of the factory. That's the only challenge. Okay, so did the factory actually ever work? The factory did not go into the commercial production. What we did was a series of test runs. Because after putting up a factory, it's a machinery. So you need to go through test run to check and say that everything will be in order. And that is what we did. But the commercial production was not done. Why didn't we get to commercial production? You know, there were plans. And the plans were we do test runs in 2016. Then in the 2017, you go into the full production. So the test run was done, and even the machinery, the factory itself, was completed before time, because it was supposed to be completed in October 2016. But in May 2016, it was completed. The plan for the processing of the sugar cane was completed. But there were other civil works which were ongoing. You see, and by October 20... So, well, not quite mm -hmm. completed then. If you had still had civil works, to undertake it means you were not exactly. No, no, what I'm saying is in May 2016, because the whole facility was supposed to be completed in October 2016. Okay. 
but about five months before time, the machinery were completed. But there were civil works yet. So the civil works were scheduled to be completed in October 2016. And by October 2016, it was completed. Okay. That's what I mean. So, so, so if I then when me, did you decide to do the test run? Yeah, we decided to do the test run because just as radio station or TV station, for its setup, you do test transmissions. <laughs> Am I not correct? So the test transmission will get you to understand that, yes, everything is in place. So we did a test run. And, and produced sugar. We produced sugar. Sugar was produced. We produced byproducts such as baggers, which is used for the production of energy and other things, like cattle feed, uh, paper industry. And the impression at the time was that, I mean, we have produced sugar and we're going to have sugar coming through. But every uh, business, you need to advertise the business. You need to market it. Let people know that this is what you're going to do or what will be on the market. So in May 2016, the, uh, the plant was commissioned for test runs so that everybody would know that, yes, now the plant is ready. By the time we go into the commercial production, this is what will be on the market for us to see. So that is it. And there was nothing wrong with that because I don't think if Joy FM, when it was established, when they were doing the test run, it means that they were wrong to do the test run. No, as but any when, other. When, when we do test run, we start the, the test run and it continues all the way until we actually hit the air, as in we start full, product, I mean, full that, operation. That is why I'm saying, yeah, I am just comparing the radio station to a factory, but they are not the same. Do you get me? You are doing a factory, and the factory too is a seasonal production. We do seasonal production. And per the our climate, from October, November, December, April, May, June, that is uh, April, by May, you have to stop production because of the rains. Then you do your uh, maintenance and servicing because the factory or the machines needs to go through routine maintenance and servicing. So these are the differences. Uh, okay, so you, you did the test run and you shut it down. Yes. Why? We shut it down because there were other works that are supposed to be done, like civil works. You know, there's a food product. So if you are not done with all the civil works that are supposed to be completed, then how can you produce on the market? That is why you test the machines, everything is set. You need to go through other works that are supposed to be done. That is why it was shut down. And as I said earlier, the test run itself was supposed to be done in October after the completion. But because they've completed the machines, you have to test the machines. Because as for the building, you don't need to test the building. Administration block, you don't need to test the administration okay, block. So you, you've actually gone ahead to also indicate that the test run was supposed to have been done in October. But yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You did that in, in May. In May, because five months ahead of time, the factory, the plant, was completed. So why do you wait for the next five months before you test it? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so then it was shut down and then uh, December 2016 happened. Yes. There was an election. Exactly. And then the factory didn't get to start again. You know, every, every government has its priority. And it was a priority project of the NDC, John Mahama NDC government, the sugar factory, because uh, the groundbreaking was done in 13th of August 2014, and the commission in 2016, hoping that any successive government will continue it. Because going into the election 2016, nobody will know the outcome of the election, although you may hope that you will win. And you know, let me give you something. We uh, give the project was two tranches, two tranches of loans, $35 million from Indian Exum. That was for the construction of the sugar factory. The mechanical, engineering, civil, everything was $35 million. And a counterpart funding of $1.5 million was added from the Ghana government. That's from Ex Exum Bank, now Exum Bank, then EDIF, which was under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Then the second tranche was $24.5 million, 
which was only for sugarcane development, irrigation and outgrower scheme, $24.5 million. In November 2016, Parliament of Ghana approved that uh, loan and the Indian government also made all the necessary arrangements by February 2017. That money should be assessed so that we will be able to use it for the sugarcane development. Okay, so at the time that in May 2016, when the test run happened, which should have happened in October. Yes. If it had happened in October, at what point were you going to get actual you know, sugar cane to, do, to start commercial operations? You see, the facility, the capacity of this facility is 1,250 tons of sugar a day. The crushing of the okay. sugar cane a day, 1,250 tons. It does not mean that you need all the 1,250 a day before okay. you can... Uh, so even with 150 tons a day, you can op uh, operationalize the factory or can, can work efficiently. So the plan was, in the short term, will depend on the outgrowers who are existing uh, within the central and western regions. These outgrowers would supply the canes to the factory to start work. So we planned that by January, we're going into the production, that's the commercial production. Because even though you'd have had the outgrowers bringing you. Exactly. Rubber. That is what we got. Because the outgrowers within the catchment area could produce between 500 to 700 tons a day. So if we need the minimum of 150 tons and the outgrowers within that enclave can get us 500 to 700 tons, then it means we don't have any challenge at all. Yeah. All right, we also have joining us uh, Richard Kojonyaku, who's our correspondent in the region. And uh, for Richard, I'd want to understand what's the sense, what, 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 how are the people feeling about the fact that we have this factory sitting there. The factory could have been giving them jobs, the people of Commander jobs, not just the people of Commander, the people of Commander and the surrounding mm -hmm. communities yes. jobs. It was going to produce sugar. It was going to ensure that the outgrowers will have somewhere to sell their produce, the people who are producing the or cultivating the sugar cane. How are they, how are they taking all of this? And the fact that it's been, what, four years, five. getting to five years after this factory was put up and promises to get the factory operationalized, and yet nothing is happening. Hello, Richard. Are you with us yet? Richard, you have to unmute. Yes. Um, hello, Israel. Yes, we can hear you now. So just asking, what are okay. the sentiments? What are the people saying about all that's going on and the, and the stalling and the fact that the factory is sitting there and nothing is happening? Well, so Israel, people are livid, they are distraught. Um, they felt that um, the promise of building a sugar factory for the people of Commenda would um, create some jobs, both um, direct and indirect jobs. And so when... Right, we have uh, we seem to have in some challenges with the connection to uh, Richard. Richard, uh, are you back? Yes, I'm back, Israel. Can All you right. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so people felt that after the construction works and the factory uh, was commissioned, they were gonna get some jobs. Um, there are some uh, sugar cane uh, uh, plantain farmers there that were looking forward to receiving new varieties of the sugar cane in order to also boost their businesses. But um, unfortunately, the factory is still sitting down there. So if you go to Commander right now, um, people that um, were expecting all of these, um, their hopes have been died. So uh, others have also had to even um, travel to La Côte d'Ivoire and other neighboring communities because you know, uh, their main occupation is fishing. So apart from fishing, they felt that the Commander Sugar Factory was going to be an alternative uh, means of livelihood, uh, of support of some kind of employment, uh, so that they would also rely on that. But 
their hopes have simply been died. And so they are looking forward to the revival of the Comenda Sugar Factory, the promises that were made. You know, recently the president uh, went there to promise them that they were looking forward to um, getting a strategic partner to revamp uh, the Comenda Sugar Factory. But all of these things um, is being talk, 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 nothing visible, they say, has been seen to be done there. And so that is, these are the concerns of the people. But look at the commander area along the fishing communities, um, the deprivation, the levels of uh, depravity that are there. And so they were hoping that if this is a factory and the factory has been commissioned and they felt that everything was um, on point, assuming they are assuming that even if the stats of the factory was wrong, the premise was wrong, they were expecting that the government has taken over and the government was going to um, ensure that the factory would work. But now they keep on hearing stories, stories and stories. So, Israel, so these are the sentiments of the people of Commander. All right, Richard, I want you to hold on. We've been speaking with some of them. Let's get to hear them. I'll, I'll come back to you. Come on, brother. My family is walking school next year before I'm born. My family is going to be to go to hospital. No, we're not going to go to the hospital. We're 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 going to the hospital. We're going to go 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 to the hospital. My banner going to Nababa. I be some monk, a honey tama, monko your boat to make me a begin it out. Oh, a bit some cook massy, monko you feel me, monkotaqua, monko em a man say way way wooty, monko hit me ye. Nay, I fear a bra bono. I shall send me a catch and I know no one for ten and I shall say no one. I am commander of Yeni and Omani. Any so you know why I am a walker came a brother that was that to I a juma. You know, I start to I can't work and I'm not so my answer for it. Yes, I can't get me to be there. I can't hear it. 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 I Right, so you just said uh, some of the residents of Commander there. We have the convener of concerned residents of Commander Samuel Awuja joining us. Via Zoom. Uh, Samuel, thank you for making time to speak with us. What do you understand to be what is holding up the operationalization of the factory? Thank you, Israel, and good morning to your listeners and your viewers too. Um, we, as concerned citizens of Commander, have always been advocating for the operationalization of the factory. If you remember, if you remember, we wanted to embark on a peaceful demonstration, but uh, the government came in through the regional minister and the MC to have discussions with that, uh, with the hope that the strategic investor was coming in to take over the operations. But they gave us to the end of August. We are in the middle of October. We've even given them almost extra two months. Uh, we were looking forward that the factory will work, but to date, nothing is happening. We can say that the only difference that we are seeing now is just the rate connection of the electricity, uh, the electricity grid to the factory. So as I'm speaking to you, the only difference that we are, we are seeing is that there is electricity, there is light at the factory there, but nothing is happening. We, we, we are still, uh, hoping that the government will come in and then fulfill its promise of officializing the factory for the youth in commander tradition area to get jobs to do. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Samuel. I'd come to you, Ransford, uh, in the studio. There. So, electricity has been connected to the place as we were hearing, but you obviously know that. It's, it's, um, it's going to take a whole lot more than just, you know, connecting electricity to the place to get it running. The machines in its current state, you know, corroded and all that, they probably would have to you know, scrap a lot of the, the machinery as they are now. 
is, is there, are you really confident that, or what do you think it will take to get this thing restarted? You know, uh, as I said, it is a politicization that is uh, affecting this factory because the politics is too much on this factory. What I believe is that if the government is really determined to let this factory run, they would have done that long ago because when they assumed office, the conversation... Why, why, why would you think that they would not be interested in... I know they are not interested because this... It's, it's a state asset. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, when they assumed office, this was a government that was preaching 1D1F. One, one one if this factory is running and we're producing enough sugar and we don't have to import sugar, it goes to the credit of government. It, goes it makes things easier for for the managers of the economy. So that, why would why would that that, to... that is why I'm saying there's a politicization because from the onset when we started the construction of the sugar sugar factory, there were a series of press conferences from the NPP against this government. The uh, one was led by Professor Jan Bafo, who was then ranking member on Trade and Industry Committee in Parliament. Nana Komia, Samia Oku, they all held press conferences against it. And you know when they assumed office. The former regional minister, Kwame Duncan, the first statement he made was that the factory is an abattress on their neck. And this was the uh, government with pre 1D1F. And commander alone, commander uh, KE district, they have commander sugar factory and Elmina fish processing factory. So we thought that at least for this particular uh, municipality, they have two factories. So this one, the one, if we can have to, but they rather abandoned these two uh, projects and went to uh, sachet water processing factory, Petersville and Ray, and they termed that factory, which had less than 100 workers, as the district factory for Commander, Tradition, uh, Commander Edna Egua Fabri municipality. Right. So what, what makes this government interested in the Commander Sugar factory? So we're learning that the president is, uh, is going to be in the region. Yes. And he's going to commission a number of uh, 1D1F projects. Mm -hmm. For all you know, he's going to make a statement to that effect. And yes, we've indicated that we're supposed to speak with the uh, vice chair of, uh, of PwC to give us an update on what is happening with the factory. We're still waiting for him to get back to us on that. But hopefully we can get some some comments from him, and then we can move the co this conversation forward. Or hopefully, we're going to hear something concrete as to what, what is going to happen. But one of the things that came up, I recall, has to do with how much was spent on the factory. Oh. And the, the suggestion is that we pumped in so much money into the factory, but what is actually on the ground is a whole lot less than the amount of money that was injected into it. Essentially, suggesting that uh, some of the money has gone somewhere. <laughs> How do you respond to that? Uh, uh, Israel, I, 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 I don't understand this. Because, you know... But you know that that point has been made. It, oh, certainly. And I've refused that allegation on several occasions. And I've been waiting for the government, <laughs> any person from the government side, to debate me on this. And they keep running away. I don't understand. Because if for nothing at all, if the minister is not speaking, the deputy should speak. If the deputy is not ready, they have an information minister. They should give every information to any of the information ministers to debate me on Commander Sugar Factory. Because even the ministry has a PRO. If you call the ministry PRO, he will never talk. Why? Why? But they will tell you that the, uh, we spend a lot of monies, and that is, I would be very happy if Visha Shagbo would speak or join us to ask, uh, answer questions on this valuation report. Because they claim that in 2016, uh, 2016 we asked during our time, it's true, we gave the PWC that contract to value this fa uh, facility for us. And this was the valuation that they gave. My, my concentration is on the plant and machinery. They price the plant and machinery at 34.6 million US dollars. Right. The same PWC. Then in September 2017, after these people assumed office, the, the, uh, the plant and machinery 
reduced to 12 million, over $22 million reduction. Almost 70% devaluation. It does not happen anywhere in this world. Less than a year. Less than a year. Could it, could it be that most of the plants and machinery had to be written off because they were obsolete or essentially? Israel, let me tell you something. When you look at the re this report, they claim that certain components were not installed. It is false, absolutely false. We bequeathed to this government a complete factory. So let's grant it what they are saying is true. If it is true that certain components were not installed, my brother, what they should do is that ask Seftec India Private Limited, the contractors, to come and install. Meanwhile, there were recommendations that they should ask the Seftec here, said complete installation by Seftec. Seftec India Private Limited, they were the contractors. And he said, you know what? This loan, $35 million, the money did not come to sit in the government's, uh, government's coffee. So there was a consultant to the, the uh, International Federation of Sugar Factories in India. They were the consultants of the facility. The condition on this loan was that we, the Indians, will not give our monies to you so that you give it to a Chinese or any other nationals to build a factory for you. So do a competitive bidding. Select an Indian contractor to build a facility. We understood. There was an agreement. So Seftec started the, production, uh, the construction. The Sugarcane Federation, National Federation of Sugarcane of India, they were the consultants. So they approved the work, and the payment is done by the Exim Bank of India to Seftec India Private Limited. So we never paid any money to them directly. So if you think that they did not install certain components, what are you supposed to do? Don't you tell the Indian government that your nationals, who were supposed to give us the complete project, they did shoddy work. They did not complete the project. So ask them to come and complete it. Because this is a loan. It's not a grant. It's a loan which is supposed to be uh, repay from October this very month, five years after the completion of the factory, we had five years moratorium to repay the loan for the period of 15 years. So if we are going to pay this money and the factory is not working, we are not getting any dividends, we are not getting any profit from the, from the factory, it means we are going to take money from our coffers. I don't know whether they will use the oil money or whatever to pay this loan. So. Meanwhile, Israel, this Seftec India Private Limited, they are in arbitration with this government, uh, Ghana government. They are demanding their monies, which they use for pre-financing of the nursery plantation, because we did not pay that money. We asked them, you know, I told you that $24.5 million was expected from the Indian government, which should have been assessed by February 2017. So we, we plan with them that they should uh, do 125 acre nursery plantation, which will be transplanted onto 2,000 acres. So the plan was let them do it, let, let them pre finance it. So when this money is ready, 24.5 million is ready, we we'll reimburse the money to them. Since this government was not interested, they just left the, uh, the project abandoned. And in July 2018, the minister, Honorable Alan Chermating ordered to, uh, the management at the time to sell those sugar cane to Apeteshi, the distillers. Do they have interest to let the factory run, Israel? That is why I'm telling you that I doubt they will let this factory run because that is not part of the agenda. It is not their priority project. They think they did not start it, they did not build it. It was uh, a, a project which was started by the NDC government, completed by the NDC government, so they are not even interested in assessing the $24.5 million to do the other works. All right, so the conversation we're having this morning, I, I know that there's going to be a lot of back and forth, you know, some being accused, I mean yourself, and those who put together the, the factory, they're going to be accused as the allegations, where the allegations fly. And there are others too who are going to say, like yourself, you're saying that 
the government doesn't seem interested and committed to it. They are not interested. They are not interested. Or personalizing the factory. Because they have some deals with... At the end of the day, as you indicated, there's a loan that has been taken that Ghana has to pay. Yeah. If this factory is operationalized, we're going to not have to spend that much to import sugar. We're going to see jobs being created in Comenda, not just for the people of Comenda, but surrounding communities. Anybody else in Ghana who can get to go work there. We're going to see farmers who are also going to start cultivating the sugar cane for the, the factory. So there's a lot that could go for us. For most Ghanaians, their interest is not who did what. Sure. For most Ghanaians, it's about getting the factory working or cutting our losses, whichever way it's going to be. And so that's the reason we'd want to hear from government and get to know what government is doing about it. We've been giving promises, but it appears that the promises have not been fulfilled. I'm very hopeful and optimistic that when the president, or the president is going to say something about the Comenda Sugar Factory when he gets to the region this month, I mean this week. That's so okay. we, can, we can do all, we can have all these conversations. We can have all these conversations, but at the end of the day, it's not just about the conversation. We're hoping to see something being done. Let's hear what the president said when he, what the president has said about the Commander Sugar Factory when he visited the region some time back. The amount of land we need for the sugar, the type of sugar we can grow here, all those things were not properly organized. I think the ASR organization. The ASR organization and also the between me strategic investor and also into me about what I'll be so Nancy, over to be prepared for me no and check for All right, so that was the president promising. That was back in, in 2018. Hopefully we're going to hear something again and hopefully it's going to be more concrete or we're going to see something because as uh, anyone indicated, yes, we've heard a lot. We want to see something happen. I don't know how else we're going to carry on with this conversation, especially if we don't have uh, Vishal Shagbo giving us any update on, on the on the issue. S Samuel Ewuja, um, if you're still on, on the line with us, I'd want to understand what, what do you expect to happen? Right, we don't have uh, Samuel Awuja um, yet, but it will be interesting to hear what the people of Comenda themselves speak about. If you live in the, in the area, you can join us by phone. Let us know what you think or, what you, or how you think we should carry this conversation uh, moving forward. Should you, you be speaking with your MP for the area to put some pressure on him? You should be speaking with your MCE. How do you think we can approach this issue and get the Commander Sugar Factory operationalized? Because the more we keep talking about it and, and waiting, the factory is wasting away. Sure. And as you can see already, we're seeing plant and machinery corroded. Okay, so I have uh, Awuja joining us on, on for now. Mr. Awuja, how would you want us to carry this conversation forward? Or what would you want to see happen? Yes, thank you, Israel. Like we indicated earlier, all that we are interested in is for the factory to work. You know, they use need jobs. And even as part of the negotiations that we had with the government, we indicated that um, the local content should also be taken care of. In um, fact, that um, the youth here will be given some data to work in the factory. So we are still looking forward and then hoping that the factory will be operationalized for the youth especially to get jobs. So nothing else, nothing more. All that we need is for the factory to work. So you had indicated that you wanted to embark on a demonstration. Would you want to do that? Huh? 
I'm speaking to you. We are still negotiating with the government as to the as to how the vaccine will be operationalized. Um, I cannot say uh, now that we are still going to go on a demonstration, but uh, the government has made an effort, and we are still optimistic that um, um, the vaccine will be operationalized. So we are still looking forward. To any other thing we will, we will let you know all right thank you very much uh, samuel for for joining us if you're in the area as i indicated and you you have some thoughts on it would love to hear what you have to say about it but uh, back to you yeah, ransford is, is there what do you think is going is going to happen with this factory you know eventually I will talk. Considering, considering the amount of uh, corrosion and wasting away that has happened, because as it is, if we're to, you have anybody coming in, they're probably going to scrap a lot of the machinery. I mean, scrap it completely, and I would have to buy some fresh machinery. You see, uh, Israel, these machines that we installed, the state of the art machines, which has a lifespan of 50 years, but it needs to go through routine maintenance and servicing. But it has been there for five years. Nothing is happening to it. So definitely the corrosion and other uh, components may be destroyed as, uh, because of the defect. So I know that is, what, that is going to happen. But the government, I would tell my brother Awuja and the people in the commander area, that the government is only interested in deceiving the people of Ghana. Because the video that you played, the president's video, that was on the 15th of September 2018. After he made this statement, I knew it was wrong. What he, he said was false. I issued a statement to the bank in succession, and I threw a challenge that they should mark it on the wall. There wouldn't be any investor to take over this factory because they are deceiving the people of Ghana. When the, uh, the same citizens wanted to embark on demonstration on the, 9th, uh, on the 10th of December 2019. Upon hearing that, they introduced an investor, the Park Agrotech Ghana Limited, on the 26th of November 2019, that they are going to take over the facility. 26th of uh, November, 20, the next month will be exactly two years. The investor hasn't reported. When the, uh, the minister went to parliament on the 3rd of June 2020, when they asked me questions why the investor is not on site, he said, because of COVID-19, the investor is in India. So as soon as the restrictions on foreign travels is lifted, the investors will come and work. You can play that tape. That was on the 3rd of June, 2020. Then just last, about two, three months ago, on the July 22nd, the MP for the area, Honorable Samuel Atamels, fired an agent question, and he came to Parliament. When they asked about it, he said, they are going to finalize the agreement with the concessionaire, that's a uh, Agro Park Agrotech Ghana Limited, by the close of August 2021. August has passed. September has passed. Now we are in October. October, we have left about uh, two, two weeks to end October. And Israel, I am telling you, I sat on it, said, uh, other sister stations in, within August, and I told them that the August will end and there would not be any investor. And as I'm speaking to you, there is no investor. That is why... Why are you I, so confident about it? You see, no, I'm not confident. I have information. Whatever information that happens around the Commander Shiga factory, even within the ministry, I get information about it. I get a hint of what they are doing. It is only a plan to deceive the people of Ghana. So I am telling you, Israel, find out from Vish. If you will not talk publicly, let him talk to you privately or talk to your producer privately to find out if they have signed an agreement. They have not. But you know my problem? This government, they are saying that they want an investor to handle, uh, to handle this facility. But I don't think... Uh, the investor can, uh, is the only investor who can handle it. Government of Ghana can do it because Ghana Gas is doing well and there is no investor at Ghana Gas. We, we gave the ECG, was given to PDS. What happened? Wasn't that an investor? Wasn't that a private person? 
It's not a private entity that took over the ACG. What happened? Nobody took it back. Government is taking it back. Exactly. That is why I'm saying that like, government is capable of doing it. So if you think an investor or you don't have any investor to work on it, you government, if you are willing to let it run, just get it running. Because it's your own facility. The company is 100% owned by the people of Ghana. So if the government can run other uh, companies, other manufacturing companies, why can't the government also run the sugar factory? All right, hold on. Would, uh, you, you made reference to some comments made by the trade minister. Let's get to hear him, and uh, we'll come back and continue the conversation. In, in collaboration with this transaction advisor, Price Waterhouse, Cooper is Ghana Limited. It's in the process of concluding the conditions precedent for the activation of the concession agreement with a selected strategic partner, Park Agrotech Limited, to commence operations at the Commander Sugar Factory. Government has a right to terminate uh, the, the agreement. But be that as it may, we are hoping that they will conclude and finalize the fulfillment of these conditions of, pre, uh, of uh, conditions president by August this year. And then once that is done, it paved the way for us to require the company uh, to commence activation of the company before the end of the year. All right, so we have a few people uh, joining us on phone. We have Sami calling us from Sunyani. Hello, Sami. Hello, good morning. Good morning. And I'm happy to contribute to the discussions as well. Sure. My expectation is that any company in Ghana, any factory by state, should be up and working so that Ghanaians can get jobs. That is the most important thing for us. But what I'm worried is the politics of factories in this country. And it is not helping us. I wish we can do away with politics and talk about issues. How did this thing start? We were all, all here when we were told that the factory is working. Then just after election, we realized that it wasn't working at full time. And all the incumbrances are running. So please, when the discussion is going on, they should do away with the politics and go straight to the point so that we can all go along with it. Thank all right. you. All right, thank you very much, Sam. We have uh, Ben calling from Krachi. Hello, Ben. Yeah, hello, good morning. Good morning. Your listeners and your good self and your uh, guest in the studio. I have been watching the discussion, I've been following the discussion, and I'm lost as to what goes into the mind of our politicians when they sit and watch national assets the way it is doing. This, as we are discussing now, I am believing very well that should NDC also come to power, they would equally sit and watch other things that NDP has done to what? I, I feel very sad for the country because all of this talk is going to be borne by the Ghanaians. I am sorry, but good morning to your listeners once more. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ben. So, yes, I mean, what you're saying is true, that the cost is going to be borne by the Ghanaian. We have to pay for it because we took a loan. We took a loan to get to finance the, the construction of the, of the factory. So we have to pay for it. So that's why I'm saying we, we better cut our losses or decide what we're going to do with it so that we can cut our losses. Otherwise, we can get the factory working so that it can provide the jobs, it can provide the, the sugar that we need and so we don't have to import as much and get the farmers in the area also working and getting some jobs. You have Ishmael calling from Bono East. Hello, Ishmael. Hello, Ishmael. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, in the discussion, I also wanted to contribute. Sure. Go ahead. Um, my expectation is seeing this work. It has been uh, long overdue. Um, the dynamics of this country politics is now becoming um, to us. When we sit down to see what is happening with the LGBT, we are young. We are, I'm just about 25 years. 
And when I look at the future of this country, the politicians are playing with it. And they'll be surprised to see that maybe the next generation will come and they will sit down. Maybe they will amount the wealth they want, but the country will go down in their presence. So what we are expecting as youth is to see this country work again. Loans will not benefit us. If this party is working, it will employ people. And at the same time, it's going to benefit the community at large. So we are begging the president, they should remove politics from this. It is about the future of this country. Thank you very much. Vincent. Vincent is calling from Cape Coast. Vincent, you're going to be our last caller. Good morning, Israel. Good morning. Uh, please, I want to contribute to the discussion. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Israel, what is happening in Ghana, when you look at it, it's uh, like they are joking with the uh, future. Because you can't allow a nation, something like this, that will create jobs for the youth. To just go like that just because you are on the maybe different political party and it's not you who started a project. You see, as I'm talking to you, I was working with GN Bank and that thing happened at my home. I don't have a job. Now this one that can also give some people jobs, it is also left to rot. So please, these politicians where it is heading to us, we need to I mean hold them accountable. So sometimes when you are on the media, let them know that what they are doing is not right. We are all crying for the nation, for our future. Nobody is, I'm not in this, I'm not in peace. I'm a Ghanaian. So Isa, that is what I have to contribute this morning. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And uh, as I indicated, you're going to be our last caller. And that's where we wrap up the conversation. We were hoping that we're going to get uh, PwC, the uh, uh, vicious shadow of PwC, to join us for the conversation. He hasn't been able to, even though we've been communicating with him all this while. I'm hopeful, and I want to believe that the president is going to make a statement on the Commander Sugar Factory shortly and get us to know which is the way forward and what we're going to do about it. But I'd want to thank you to Ransford, uh, the former, Ransford Amma, the former board secretary of the Commander Sugar Factory, essentially more like the project. Um, you were working with the, with the project. Yeah. The com, you know, to put it together. Sure. That's why you're happy to know so much. So thank you very much for coming through. Welcome. We're all hoping that the factory will get. That, that's work, what we're hoping for. You know, you I told you that Vish will never come because he will not get a clearance from the ministry to talk. And <laughs> I'm right, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ransford. And thank you to those of you who called uh, into the show. We're taking a break. There's more coming up on the show. Stay tuned in.